Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating in my studio. Every day I share a video with you on YouTube in which I paint and create all sorts of nature inspired pictures. I also share loads of tips on how to make the most of your painting journey, interrupted fairly frequently by our family of dogs, cats, chickens and sheep. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, today we're going to paint happy sunny lemons, but first I've just received this package from Japan and I'm going to open it now. Lots of people have asked where they can get the round brushes I use and I'll put the contact details in the description below if you want to order some from Japan like I do. I've used their brushes for a good 20 years now and so some of them are getting a bit worn out. Um, they, they don't seem to have any, um, what do you call it, any retail outlets over here. Um, so if you want to buy their brushes you have to contact them direct but they do supply people direct, which is incredible fun. So they all speak English. I don't expect you to talk Japanese, which is a relief. So anyway, here I have from Japan, um, complete with all the paperwork of the customs and everything else. How many brushes have they sent me? Two, four, five, five brushes. So you and me are gonna unwrap this. and see what's inside. This is my very first 3B. Got another one coming soon. Got an Etcher sketchbook coming soon. How about that? So here we are, a sample of these brushes. I think these ones might be slightly different from the ones that I normally use, but you will see. It's exciting, it's like Christmas. Sample, eight pieces. Oh, okay, that's getting better already. sent me a flat one. I don't have any of their flat ones so far. Heartily recommend these brushes. Like I say, I've been using them for a very long time and they hold a lot of paint, hold a lot of water, and they have a very good sharp point. And that's really important for me. And I'm sure it's important for everyone. A lot of the other brushes that I've had over the years haven't had that ability to hold a point for very long. But these are very good. Ooh, there's three different types here. Oh, some of them have got gold ferrules. Whoops. Come out, come out. Okay, so what have we got here? These are number uh, SP878 is their code number. So that is that one, that's a size three. That's a size one. That's great actually, because I haven't got one that size. I took all my brushes with me to Spain two years ago and left them behind when we had the pandemic so all my small ones are over there in Spain so that's really good. That's a number two. Perfect for painting the eye of a bird. And there's a number ten. Oh that's wonderful. That is great. And then a small flat and a larger flat. That's great. And this is another small one. That's the Maestro. That must be the best brand. It's only a little one, but it looks nice, and that's a number eight. I'm going to use this one, this number eight Maestro, in my very next painting. 
But for now, let's put the brushes away and get started on our lovely lemon painting. This is, um, I was uh, working on planning out some lessons at one point and this is what I did at that time. I had my lemon sitting in front of me as all good artists should have their materials in front of them, shouldn't they? And um, so first of all, step one was to paint, sorry, to draw, to draw the shape of the lemon. Lemons can vary quite a bit, can't they, in shape. Um, you tend, the ones that you tend to get in the shops have been kind of grown to a certain pattern. But um, when you are in Spain, you'll find that on the trees they grow in the most uh, very strange designs. Looking for an eraser. I know a car here it is. And somewhere, one of these ones. Okay, so that's basically a lemon. And the first thing to do, or at least one way, is to wet the whole area of the lemon. And when you look at it, you can see that it's, the shadow is down here and the highlightest area is here, and here on the right are the mid-tones. So we'll just drop a little bit of shadow underneath. And then I'm going to start with lemon yellow and uh, just pop that all over. Then quinacridone gold. for the dark and the warmer shadow on that side. And then on the other side here, we could uh, have a greenish shadow, leaving this area here as the lightest part. And for the shadow underneath the whole thing, I usually go for the complementary of the yellow and just drop in a little bit of purple, mauve, violet, whatever. And now we need to let that dry. Another way of doing your lemon is to, again, just Draw the lemon and don't wet the paper, just come in with your lemon yellow, which always gives more intensity. Both methods are reasonable and then you can Either wait for it to dry and come in with another layer, or you can do the same as what you did up there. Drop in some quinacridone and a little bit of greenish. And you can use a darker green color for the shadow underneath if you want. Both of these now need to be allowed to dry and then you'll come back in and you might drop in a much more intense yellow there or that is to say almost an orange or you might, uh, well you could do it somewhat like this. So. 
probably could add a little bit more here at the moment. But really, the best thing to do is to let it sit and dry. Because you'll be surprised what that paint will do. So these lemons are dry now, so I'm going to come in with a little bit more quinacridone gold underneath here, just to strengthen the shadow area. And to make that look more blended, if you just clean the brush and just come in and allow it to melt into the lighter area a little bit like that. And what you can do is you can build up layers like this, letting it dry completely in between the, in between the layers until you get the depth of color that you want without it going muddy. So if you just stick with the two colors that we're using for shadow, which is um, sap green and quinacridone, and you use those for the for the shadows, then you should it should stay fairly clean. And obviously if you put more green on like that, then your lemon is <clears throat> significantly less ripe. If you put lots of warm color in, then it's uh, going to look as if it's seen a lot of hot Spanish sun. And you can also emphasize the shadow underneath. You could use um, cobalt blue like that. Anything that's kind of complementary to the to the yellow and the green that you've used would be nice. Or you can use you could even use um, green. You could use olive green, perhaps mixed with a bit of quinacridone, if you want to do a shadow which is analogous, so basically in the same range of colours. So either way would work. You could also use, I often use um, a, a purple colour, quinacridone purple or something like that. But, but you know, the blue is more, is more of a sharp shadow, the green is more subtle. So either of those work and you can um, indicate the uh, what do you call that bit at the end? The bit at the end? I don't know, the pointy bit? Um, just put some more shadow around there. That might be a little bit too green. I'll take that out. Okay, so there at that point we would let that dry and come back when it's dry and see whether it needs any more layers. Okay, so uh, it's dry now, and um, I need a reasonably small brush, I think. This is going to be a number two, to pick up some shadowy color. So um, a dark yellow. And I'm going to try to just, looking at the lemon, going to try to indicate the area here where there's a bit of shadow and here we have um, that's brownish thing there and so this shadow needs to be softened dry because it will dry lighter and then down the other end we've got a sort of greenish brown stalky thing down there more brown than green so that would be if we put it around that way we could see it okay let's do it down here Soften the area around it. And I think I'd quite like to put, whoops, do not escape me, uh, a little bit more orange colour. 
around there. Then back up here, I'm going to darken the shadow underneath. And this one similarly. And maybe And again, we'll let that dry down there and down there and some lemon. And maybe we'll just pop some more lemon yellow on the top here. Okay, so now we can let those dry. Now hopefully if you paint a couple of lemons like this when it comes to doing the bunch of lemons, uh, which we have sketched out here, which would be the next thing, you'll be very confident about doing that. And uh, you could um, if you wanted to, use a much warmer orange, if you feel that way inclined. There's nothing wrong with bringing in some really warm highlights in various places. So you'd need a touch of cadmium red for that. But that's a matter of choice. So that's our practice for today and I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the box below the video. In the next video in this series on yellow, we're going to be painting a beautiful branch of lemons growing in a tree, just right for the summer holidays. And so I hope you'll join me to do that. And I look forward to seeing you there in the next little while. So I'll say bye-bye for now, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye everyone, bye-bye.